Hi everyone, so today we are going to look at a way to create some interesting generative noise music within Maxim SP, not using too many objects. So we're going to start with our basic groove object. And um, I'm going to use the hashtag uh, number to create a local instance. And I'm going to use that, of course, with buffer as well. So let me... Uh, Sorry, just typing this out. So let's uh, make it stereo. And we'll create an easy DAC to hear our audio. And we'll give it a, uh, oops. We'll give it a playback rate using an audio signal in the first inlet of that groove. So let's load up some sound, we'll just listen to this sound. Okay, so there's our, our loop. Let's actually make sure that it's looping. So we'll turn on the loop parameter. I like to use loop interp as well, which interpolates between the first and last sample, uh, allows there to be a little bit less clicking. Um, so we can listen to that once more. Uh, So standard groove, this should be familiar to everyone. Now we're going to use a bit of audio analysis. I'm going to do zero crossing, zero X, uh, which stands for zero crossing, which looks at the number of times the, uh, the audio signal goes between the zero value. So say from a positive to a negative value or a negative value to a positive value uh, within um, a certain period uh, within the audio buffer. So I believe that's 512 samples by default. Um, and so this will give us, we can just see what kind of numbers this gives us by using the number object. So in general, zero crossing will measure uh, noise. So in particular, it'll uh, have higher readings for percussive strikes. So it's, it's a really useful audio analysis tool, uh, especially for rhythmic material. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the zero crossing to modulate the playback speed of Groove. So uh, we can first try just connecting that. First I'm going to create a scaling using the uh, multiplication function. And I'm going to use an offset with a plus function. And that'll give us some tweak ability for the zero crossing. So we'll try connecting this directly, but it might not work. Spoiler alert. So you can see that even though we have everything connected up, doing direct feedback doesn't actually give us a sound. That's because Maximus P has certain built-in mechanisms to prevent uh, feedback uh, between audio signals, which can crash the program. So we're going to use the send and receive object to circumvent uh, that protective mechanism that Maximus P has in place. So now let's try it. So it sounds different, right? It doesn't necessarily sound good at this point, but you can tell that already something interesting is happening. Let's play around with this a little bit. So we have our sound. Let's see what happens with different values. You can see that we get lots of different effects depending on um, what our values are. I feel like in that range between, say, uh, zero to five, we're kind of getting the most interesting sounds out of that. So one way we can try and control a bit of this noise is by creating a sequencer. So we're gonna create a multi-slider object 
in combination with a counter. So we'll set that to 16. Move this over here. I like to keep my patches neat as I go along. So we can't just connect this directly. Sorry, space for a moment. We need to use the fetch message. And of course we need a metro, some sort of bang to be uh, driving our counter. And now we can see, let's pull up a little number box, connect it to the right outlet and just see what we get out of this. So you can see the values changing. We need to change the um, slider numbers so that it corresponds to the, uh, where are we? here we are. So it corresponds to the counter. And let's change our range to be negative five to five. So you can see that every half second, we're getting new values out of this multi-slider. So now we can connect this to our scale. Let's just see how that sounds. So interesting stuff. You can already see how we're kind of controlling this chaos a bit. Now we can, of course, scale our uh, multi-slider or change the size rather. And so we can use a value to do that. Um, we also want to change the count maximum as we change the size of our uh, multi-slider object. So you can see that there's a bit more repetition with these that we can hear with these uh, shorter multi-slider values. You can also tell that when we get zero, the original sample comes back, which is also kind of interesting. Um, so cool, we have, we have something that's interesting that we can play around with. We can do more with feedback, of course. Um, so for instance, we can use this value from zero crossing to also control our metro value using the snapshot object. And so the snapshot object takes a signal and it turns it into a control value. So it takes an MSP value and turns it into a max value. Um, and it does that using a bang. So what we'll do is use the bang coming out of the metro to give us a snapshot value. And our audio is not on right now, so we'll just turn it on briefly. And we'll see that there's actually value coming out of zero crossing and being captured by snapshot. So we can use that value to change our uh, metro value. And again, I'm going to use a scale and offset. Scale offset's a really convenient way of um, mapping values and getting values into that sweet spot. Really simple way. You can also use the actual scale object. Um, but I like to use the multiplication and addition because I know what's happening, I can see it, I can manipulate it, it gives me a few more parameters. It just feels a bit more transparent to me at least. So let's create a base of 50 milliseconds. You can already see how much faster that's going. And then we can multiply it by like, say 100 milliseconds. And let's just see what happens. So maybe this 100 millisecond value is a little high. We can turn that down. Maybe turn up the base a little bit, the base value, so that it's so a lower floor, or a higher floor rather, and a lower ceiling in terms of its upper and, and lower values. So I get some interesting stuff out of that. 
So you can see how this could keep on going. We could in instead use the zero crossing values to modulate the loop start and loop end points for our groove object. We could have another sequencer that we're then using to control the offset, for instance. Um, and of course, we could use these values to control filters, effects. You can see that it, it can just go anywhere. I mean, that's the beauty of Maximus P. So I hope that this simple tutorial has given you some new ideas, some new inspiration, and you can uh, dig in and make some noise. Thanks for watching.